Today, I want to show you how I created this cube-like abstract crystal. It consists of several parts. One is the main geo shape. Then we're creating variants of that. After that, we are instancing lots of small high frequency cubes on it. Then we will be going into a VDB workflow to create high frequency detail. And after that, we will be generating a volume from that. And then we go into rendering. And then the last step would be compositing. All right, so let me show you how I set things up. All right, we are starting out with a grid. On the grid, I'm creating several vectors to help me to scatter points and move them into a certain direction. Um, I'm doing it on a grid, then I'm copying it into a cube. So after that, I have a nice cube shape object. Um, I'm creating some density attribute on this cube to help me scatter points on specific locations. I'm generating a p-scale, which allows me to have randomized um, scale per cube. Um, I'm calculating some math here to be able to offset them based on the edges of the cube. So once it's um, instanced, I can now easily uh, control where I want to place them using this offset points. I can essentially move them towards the center of the cube, push them in and out. And thanks to this logic um, for uh, from Matt and Swalsh from the CG Wiki, thank you so much for the help on that. After that, I'm just bundling everything together, creating a bounce a bounce cube on this, and then I'm just booleaning it um, so I get some nice clean straight edges. And I'm doing 10 iterations on everything, and in the end I have 10 different cubes with um, all sorts of different rotations and smaller cubes. That is, from there on, I'm using one of those cubes to scatter points on this. And if I look through my camera, this is my first initial orientation. Um, then I am just creating um, scattering points on the top and on the bottom of the main cube, doing several um, iterations using the um, different seed values, and then I'm copying um, based on the variant attribute to pick one of those 10 instance cubes onto the main one. And I'm repeating the step for um, the next one. It's essentially like a, I'm using the result of this to pipe it into the next scatter. So then I'm scattering more points on this. You will see where they will be placed. It's the same logic as above, random orientation, random p-scale, copying different variants. This is the first step um, for this main thing. And then based on, once I have this shape, which is my overall silhouette of the object, I'm going into more detailed um, scattering. So I'm creating a VDB from all of this, I'm converting back to geo, and then I'm ge generating an occlusion parameter which looks like this. Based on the occlusion, I'm creating tons um, of points, actually 10,000 points on the cube, and I'm scattering just very simple boxes on it. You can see where I've got these high frequency points or cubes, which will help me to make this nice and shiny. On the left side, I'm doing a very similar thing, but I'm only scattering the points at the bottom. And then everything comes together and I have like tons of cubes, which are a little bit um, orientated and scattered in the crevices. So it just gives us a nice randomization all over. The next step is we go into the VDB workflow, which I talked before. So within this one, we are creating very high detailed um, breakups. So using the volume VOP, uh, very similar to my previous tutorial where I created these different noises. You can see we've got one, two, three noises. I'm adding and subtracting them. And based on them, I'm also creating these ISO noises. And they just help me to create some mass later on for use for shading. So um, at the bottom here, before I cache it to disk, I want to show you the attributes I have. I have a concavity, which is essentially an occlusion-based map. Then I have convexity, which is the opposite. Then I have these ISO ridges iso rock surfaces and iso rough patches and all of these are being used in shading and then because it's a glass object like a crystal i do want to have some interior volume to it and i'm generating it the same way as i did in my previous um, high detail crystal tutorial lots of noises shaping them like this using aa noises and then converting them and combining them to create something like this and that is the main logic and the shader itself Quite similar as we had it again on my main crystal one. I'm driving transmission, transmission depth, and the roughness and some bump map. And these are my user attributes, which I'm pulling in from the geo. And I'm using a couple of ranges, some triplanar projections, um, all of this together into one standard surface shader. And that gives me that final look. So now in Nuke, I did lots of um, little comp tricks to just make this a little bit more crispy and just polished looking. This is my original render, and you can see um, there, I, I've did quite a few things to make this work a little bit better. So let me walk you through it. So first, I'm pre-multiplying that, then I'm extracting the specular components. 
I'm plussing them back on top so I get a little bit more specular all over. Um, next step is to um, subtract the interior volume. Um, they look like this and I'm just removing them because now I can um, co color correct them separately from the main render. And I'm doing a couple of different grades here um, on these volumes. So obviously this is my base look, then I'm doing some um, gr color grades, more grades, on, and then I'm plussing that back together. And then on the indirect volume, which is like looking like this, um, by default, then I'm grading it, making it more orange, doing some hue shifts, just changing the bottom, more color on the bottom, and then I'm plussing that back together, right? So before, it's like this, and after my volume operations, it now looks like this. So I did quite a few tricks um, to adjust things. I used, for instance, a P mat to just isolate the bottom of the cube, and then, yeah, did some grades. After that, doing Pre-melt again so we get the proper edges back, sharpening it a little bit, using ZD Focus with a custom uh, bokeh which is um, graded, which gives me like this look. Then I get these nice um, detailed um, rings for the depth of field, using a little bit of chromatic aberration to get some lens fringing on the edges here, and then doing several glows, um, exponential glows, ones for the interior volume, and then another one for the outside, and then I'm plussing them back onto my original um, object. You can see this is without the both of those glow objects, and you can see um, it just adds a nice touch to everything to enable the glow. Um, then I'm adding it over my main background, adding a grain and vignette, and then this is the final look. And again, from let's go from the top here to the bottom. So this is the, the look and feel. You can obviously see um, different frames and it works perfectly. So again, you can follow along a tutorial which I covered in depth about a crystal. It's a high detail step-by-step -step tutorial. You'll find that on my channel. The link is in this video. So make sure to check out that in-depth tutorial to be able to create something like this in higher detail.